In this video, we calculate the limiting uh, radius for a cation in a simple cubic hole. Right, so we're talking here about uh, ionic solids and how they pack. And generally, uh, what we expect is that because anions tend to be larger than cations, the anions are going to pack much as metal atoms do in uh, lattices. And then uh, the cations, which tend to be smaller, tend to pack in the holes uh, left behind by the packing of the anions. Right, so let's choose one of the quite common uh, packing st structures here. Okay, so this will be a situation in which the anions are packing in a simple cubic lattice, and that's your simple cubic unit cell. And then uh, we have said that there's one cubic hole in this uh, unit cell right at the center, and that is exactly what the cation uh, is, going to go, is going to go. Right, so that will be your um, uh, packing with the anions uh, in the uh, simple cubic uh, corners, and then the cation in the hole. Right, so the question is, well, what is the geometry of that cubic hole? Uh, and we're going to try to relate that to the radii of the anions and the radii of the radius of the cations. Right, so let's see uh, how that would work. Right, notice that um, what we know is that what we're trying to calculate here is what is the uh, uh, closest thin radius of that uh, cation in the unit cell. Right, so something that you have to recognize here is that uh, if you look at the body diagonal of this uh, uh, cube, right, uh, you will have that there's uh, this anion and that is touching with the cation, which is touching with this uh, uh, opposite corner anion. Okay, so what we call the body diagonal of this cube, this B, is going to be equal to the sum of uh, the radius of this uh, anion, which I'm going to call R, R minus, and then you'll have twice the radius of the cation that is in the hole, all right, that is the diameter of the cation, and then you will have uh, uh, the radius of this opposite corner anion, R minus, Notice that that is going to be equal to 2R minus plus 2R plus. That is your body diagonal in this simple cubic packing. Now the question is, uh, how is this related uh, uh, to other geometric features in this uh, simple cubic unit cell? Okay, notice that if we, look, uh, if we look at an edge right here, right, that edge, uh, the length of the edge is simply going to be twice the radius of uh, one of these anions. Right, so we know that the edge is just going to be r minus plus r minus is equal to 2 r minus. Okay? All right, great. So then the question is, how are these two things related? If uh, we know how to relate those two, then we will be able to find a relationship between the radius of the cation and the radius of the anion. Well, those are simply related by trigonometry. Notice that by trigonometry, we know that um, by the Pythagorean uh, theorem, Right, uh, the squared of the body diagonal is going to be equal to the square of the edge uh, plus the square of the uh, face and uh, of the face diagonal. Okay, again, the uh, square of the body diagonal is going to be equal to the square of the edge. Okay, plus the square of the face diagonal, which we call f squared. And the face diagonal, which will be this one, notice that uh, with the Pythagorean theorem is going to be equal to just simply uh, the edge squared plus the edge squared, right? So the face diagonal squared is going to be equal to the edge squared plus the edge squared, right? So this is going to be equal to e squared plus e squared plus e squared that is equal to 3e e squared, right? So notice that now we actually have a way uh, to relate those two things so that we can solve for um, the radius of the cation as a function of the radius of the anion. Okay, here this is E, and we actually know that E is equal to 2R minus, so this will be 3, 2R minus squared. All right, so we're going to be putting together these two things, right? So let me square this uh, to show you that these two things have to be exactly the same. Okay, so let's see if I can do that here. 2R minus plus 2R plus squared that is your body diagonal squared, is equal to 3 times uh, 2r minus squared, which is the body diagonal squared as well. Right? So here, you have, we simply have a little bit of algebra to go through 
in order to find what is that magic relationship between uh, the radius of the cation and the radius of the ion. All right, so uh, we can remove the squares by doing this, and then we can solve for uh, R plus right here, which I'm going to uh, be doing right away. Notice that uh, all of these twos cancel out. Right, so you will have that this is going to be equal to the square root of 3 minus 1 r minus, which is exactly the same thing as 0 0.732 r minus. Okay, so that is uh, the tightest fitting uh, radius of the cation with respect to the radius of the anion once that cation is in a cubic hole uh, and the anions are in the corners of that cubic unit cell. Now, this would be the, the uh, perfect fit, right? So then uh, the cation would be touching with the anion, but a problem there is that the anions then would also be touching, right? Notice that if this is uh, a perfect, you have an anion directly contacting an anion, right? So, so that is actually going to lead to a lot of uh, electronic repulsion uh, or elect electrostatic repulsion. And then the idea here is that in reality, what you will see is that um, uh, the, uh, what crystals want to do is to open up a little bit the structure, okay, so that you don't have that electrostatic repulsion between uh, between anions. And then uh, what we actually then use as a guideline guideline is the fact that if your uh, the radius of your cation is larger than this limiting number, then the preferred uh, crystal structure will be this unit cell in which you would have the anions in the corners and then the cations uh, left behind in those cubic holes. Right, in the next video we're going to see uh, the whole geometry, but for one of the octahedral holes in the face-centered cubic unit cell.